Andor finishes its first season with once again a fantastic episode. So this finale features some classic finale things that you might expect from Star Wars. There's a big battle, there's some rousing speeches, but it also does some very Andor Star Wars finale kind of things, like having a child build a bomb and then he's carrying that said bomb through a crowd and then he hurls that said bomb into the crowd, killing probably a lot of civilians just that that was and then some grenades went it was just chaos and anarchy and <laughs> i absolutely loved it but also it was kind of upsetting this episode did what the show does so well and it makes me so enthralled and excited but also kind of like there's a weird melancholy and kind of horror aspect to the rebellion but the child's a rebel and not on the empire side so yay children building bombs to take into a funeral slash riot situation Yay! Andor continuously amazes and excites me in the way that it has these rebellious moments and these moments of like triumph and huzzah! But then you're kind of like, oh, but that's a little boy putting a bomb together. And his face when he's hearing the speech from Mama Andor, it's just, oh, so many emotions go through me. Like I had so many moments of just like chills and goosebumps going through my body of just kind of like in awe of like, like, Andor is doing things where it's like, I feel like I've seen this play out in other Star Wars things, and just other stuff, just other shows in general, where it's like, there's a big rousing speech, and all the rebels, all the downtrodden, whatever they are, they're all like, ooh, yes, now I'm, oh, I'm ready to fight the big evil empire slash whatever it is in any kind of property or TV show or movie. Whereas in this, instead of feeling clunky and cliche and generic, the speeches are so superbly written. We get two in this episode. One from Mama Andor towards the end, which is just, oh, like it's probably the best rebels hero, you know, uplifting. We're going to pick our boots up and get out of this mud, this situation that we have created for ourselves because we've been sleeping and just, oh, just, oh, oh. It's so well written. Her performance is so heartbreaking. There's this added layer of tragedy where she's preparing the speech, knowing that she will die at some point and that they'll only hear this speech if she's dead, which just adds another whole layer of tragedy to the whole situation. It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's very, it's good. I did really, really love the earlier speech, the little kind of manifesto speech from the boy from the heist episodes, you know, the guy from that Black Mirror episode, Shut Up and Dance. Yeah, that boy. <laughs> Let's not talk about that boy. It was really nice to have that one kind of be this kind of more intimate moment just for Andor, something that Andor can listen to, and it being a callback to that episode, but some really, like, interesting things about how, like, tyranny is, like, always got to, like, force itself, and it has to keep pushing and pushing, and the leakage of it all, and how it doesn't sustain itself, and how we just got to keep fighting and fighting and fighting, and... I don't know, it's so interesting to have him, like these little stepping stones, these little seeds of the rebellion, and the way he talks about it, it's so nice because we know it does end up with Luke, you know, shooting a, shooting a laser thingy into a hole, and it explodes. And then they do that again a couple of movies later, and it explodes again. But he's kind of like, he doesn't know it's going to be like this big bombastic 70s movie, you know, ending. But the way he's talking was like, if we just keep, keep cracking at this egg, keep cracking at this egg, one day that egg will, you know, fully crack and the yolk will sink out and, you know, the tyranny will be destroyed and all that. I think I had a better metaphor in my head. That egg one didn't, it didn't work. All I'm saying is, great speech. Goddamn, I miss that. I miss that little boy. Not, not from Shut Up and Dance, from this. I miss the boy from this, this character, not not his other character. <laughs> no, oh, 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 no. But then Mama Andor's speech is just sublime. It is probably the best hero speech we've heard in all of Star Wars. And yes, I am including the iconic, this is a rebellion, I rebel, from Rogue One trailer. And so after our glorious speeches, all our chess pieces are in play, everybody's on this big old road in Ferex, then it's chaos and anarchy and a big old riot. And what I love about this riot is it's not just chaos and anarchy and shooting, shooting. It felt really well choreographed and well staged. I really felt like I could understand where everyone was. It was like really chaotic, but in like a clean way where I didn't feel confused. It wasn't just shaky cam going mad. Papa Skarsgård doesn't really get like a kind of big juicy scene like he has in previous episodes. So in a way that's disappointing, but in a way he's had so many great moments that I'm not really disappointed. And we end the episode with him and Andor and Andor's like, you better kill me now. And I'm like, I, I, I just, 
I couldn't tell you what's going to happen now. Kill me now or I'll join the rebellion. I just, I just, I was on the edge of my seat. I don't know what's going to happen. But all jokes aside, I think it actually does speak to how rich these characters are and how well they have been kind of, you know, built up and like how much we know about them and how much we care about these two characters where we can have the end of the season be and or be like, what's, what's it going to be? Papa Skarsgård, kill me or let me join the rebellion. And we know he joins the rebellion and dies later. Like it's it's not a question to ask what's going to be chosen. But I'm still kind of on the edge of my seat. I'm still kind of like, oh, what an end. And it cuts to black. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. And the end of this episode has such a kind of a fist bump uplifting. Like he's joined the rebellion. Finally. And then there's this kind of bit of a bittersweet moment of like this melancholy feeling of like, oh, man. How long do I have to wait for more Andor? <laughs> it's been such a glorious and welcome surprise. It's been such a breath of fresh air to Star Wars. I've had so much fun watching this show. And I feel like it's just like the speeches where it's like uplifting, emotional. You know, you got the goosebumps. But then there's this kind of odd melancholy to the speeches and these rousing moments due to, you know, all the things I've mentioned before. And it's uh, just it's a complicated array of emotions that I felt and I I'm honestly gonna miss it it's maybe the best show of the year uh no uh, Better Call Saul's final season came out this year that's that's oh my god that was so good so the one thing that really kind of took me by surprise this episode was what happened with Miro she had this kind of I don't know like this trajectory where I kind of foresaw a certain end to this season playing out like I didn't think she was gonna die but there was an interesting moment where like chaos like all the rioting and stuff and she's like shoot shoot bang 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 and then she kind of like got flustered and got kind of overwhelmed by being like you know in the thick of it because you know you can be that commander that's like you know and like she's even talking back to quiet at one point being like oh we, we need them alive this and that and you're like she's taking such control and she's so in charge like she feels so competent and so like kind of you know confident in that control and being like on top of everything and she's found out this little rebellion thing and she's following all these clues and doing all these things but then in the thick of it in a gunfight she kind of gets flustered and like you know she gets hit by a rock and she's just i don't know i thought that was a really interesting way to like take her where it's like yeah you can be good at one thing doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good in the like a firefight and i thought that was a really kind of interesting layer to add to her character and then on top of that we have ramsey bolton's rent-a-cop younger brother uh, I'm gonna remember his name for the for the finale. I'm gonna remember his name. It's I want to say Cyril. Let's just go with Cyril because nothing else is coming to mind. Let's call him S Dog, bro. No, why <laughs> would it's late. So Ramsey Bolton's uptight younger brother, rent a cop character, S Dog, whatever his name was. I've I've already forgotten. I had it and it's gone. But S Dog, he's all like, I'm gonna find Andor. I'm gonna kill Andor. <laughs> and I'm like, he's gonna be this wild card. He's gonna try and kill Andor. And then Andor's gonna be like. Uh, who are you? And he's gonna be like, it's me, S-Dog, your arch nemesis from the first three episodes. And then Andor's gonna be like, I have been through so much since then, bro. You missed that prison break episode. There was three prison episodes and I met young sexy Snoke and we had a whole thing and it's just, I've forgotten about you. But no, he doesn't even meet Andor. He just sees his long lost love Miro and he falls giddy at the knees and he's like, I'm better to go save her. And then he saves her. And then we get this really weird intense moment where they almost kiss and she's like, I should say thank you. And he's like, oh my God, I wanna, oh, I wanna kiss you. This is so bad right now. And I was like, oh my Lord, this is some weird sexual chemistry. And like, there's a battle and a riot going on. So like, if they're gonna like, you know, kiss, then I just think that was going to be inappropriate. And then they didn't. And I'm like, good, because S-Dog is uh, a weird character. I don't like him. I think at one point I liked him, but he's just turned into just this weird character. And he, he upsets me on some weird visceral level. It's something about the whole looking like Ramsey Bolton, but his younger brother and he's an uptight rent -a cop Just I don't like his vibe. He's just got a bad vibe. So I'm glad he didn't get some because I don't want him to get some that sounds mean now i say it out loud i guess i guess he can have love everyone deserves love even even s dog and so this week with mon mothma she's no nah, you know what no nah, no nah, i'm going back backtracking <laughs> i've changed my mind i don't want s dog to get some nah it's just nah nah and so this week mon mothma finds out that her husband is gambling again and she's like I don't like you gambling. And he's all like, whoa, 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 I don't gamble, bro. I don't gamble. I don't. Who, who told you I gambled? Who told, tell me, tell me his name. And while this is a really interesting and complex relationship, and I'm really enjoying all this. I kind of did think maybe because it's the season finale, we might get a 
bigger kind of more emotional kind of scene. All we get is the realization that her private Uber driver likes to spy and listen to their conversations. And at first I'm like, I respect that. He's just, he's into the gossip. He just loves that high class marital, you know, fighting gossip. He just, he just loves some gossip. I respect that. That's it's like sitting on a train and you hear two people arguing and you're like, better change my song on your iPod, but you pause the iPod and you're listening. Not that I've ever done that because that's psychotic and I haven't caught a train in like 10 years, but it's, I, it's something that I, I, I know people do. I have, I, 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 someone told me they did that once a friend of a friend of like a friend, cousin's brother. They did it once. Not me because weird and creepy, but I respect it because who doesn't love some gossip? <laughs> but no, actually he's an empire spy. And while that reveal is kind of, you know, more exciting for the plot, I was really enjoying Uber driver character that likes gossip. That to me was funnier and more enjoyable just on like a, you didn't need to have him like unclick the button, like unmute it. That was just like a fun little aside. You're flushing out the world and the side characters, but no spy mole. He's evil, so uh, just a roller coaster. Like I loved him. I'm like, <laughs> Mr. Gossip Man. Ah, oh, Empire Spy. Can't can't like that. He's he's a bad guy. And so Andor ends with a post-credit scene, and it was these little dog spider droid thingies. Something I can't remember what they look like, but they're little droids and they're all doing a thing. And I'm like, oh, this is suspicious and you know interesting. And then it has this beautiful panning out shot, and we reveal the Death Star, and we reveal the the thingies, the little claw like star-shaped thingies that they were building and helping create and sh like, you know, build on the prison is parts of the Death Star. Little connecty bits of the Death Star. And I remember in that first prison episode, I'm like, oh, I wish there was a reveal at the end of the episode to reveal what they were building that was part of the Death Star or something like that. That would be really emotionally satisfying to have all these like, you know, good guys building the Death Star, all these prisoners building the Death Star by a slave labor and all these things that just would work really well. So to have it as the final reveal of the season, I found just, so satisfying it was such a great little callback such a great kind of world building moment and it's just so tragic to have Andor be part of building the Death Star but the best part of this post credit scene is they have now made it canon that young sexy Snoke helped build the Death Star which is just something I never thought was possible in my wildest dreams and I just love how kind of full circle and how connecting it is of like you know original trilogy sequel trilogy all the characters and all just blending together in this beautiful tapestry that is Star Wars and it's just oh it's just a wondrous delight and honestly any time to mention young sexy Snoke it's just uh it, it makes me happy Thanks for watching guys, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. I'd love to know what everyone thought of the season finale of Andor.